Hi, I'm Mitra Sorrells in the Focus Wire studio at Focus Right Europe, and I am joined by Sally Davy, CEO of Travelist. Welcome. Thank you. So I'd love to hear a little bit about the work that Travelist has done with New Zealand. So recently we launched a campaign in New Zealand focused on travelers, Kiwi travelers in New Zealand, essentially introducing this concept for the first time around what Travelist is doing and asking travelers to start thinking a little bit more about the impact that our travels have. So we started to um, collaborate with some local stakeholders, so local operators, especially those who have sustainable businesses in New Zealand, and devised this, this campaign essentially that was a little bit provocative and just said to travelers, okay, as you start to plan and book your trips for this forthcoming season, don't just think about ratings when it comes to the places that you're going to book. Start to think about how your holiday would rate you and the impact that you have on a destination. So, yeah, that's the, the research we're, we're running. With It um, asks travellers then to come to travellers.org and fill in a, a kind of quiz, basically, which is a bit of fun. But then that leads into a slightly more serious piece of research around the intention to action gap in sustainable tourism. We know that travellers increasingly tell us that they want to make better choices, but they don't know how and they don't feel very empowered to be making the kind of choices that they want to make. So this is our attempt to start gathering some of that data so we can start to better understand how we bridge that gap. Yeah, that's really interesting because, you know, when I think about, I mean, I've traveled here and, and I don't necessarily think about it in terms of what am I doing each day, each moment that could be impacting that's the, it. Yeah. Yeah. When we think about planning a trip, we think about our needs right. and our requirements and we right. go and search for products that fit those, which is understandable. But increasingly, we need to be thinking about how those choices are affecting the places we're visiting and the people who live there yeah. every day, year in, year out. And so I think the work that the Travelers Coalition Partners is doing that because it's bringing that kind of information front and center so that every time you book a hotel through booking.com or search for a flight on Skyscanner or on, on Google, you're seeing that information more clearly presented and more consistently presented, which is a big step towards helping consumers to make those more conscious choices. Yeah, it's kind of just giving them a different lens and framework to really think about their trips through. That's exactly. interesting. Exactly, yeah. And I think then that can create this cascade effect. It's just yeah. about being thoughtful. And you talk about how travel can be kinder. I think that comes from a place of respect and just thinking a little bit about the needs of others. That's inherently a kinder way to operate. And I think it absolutely applies to how we plan and, and how we travel. Very interesting. So let's talk about, there's some focus right research recently that found that the majority of Europeans are not willing to pay a higher fare for flights that use sustainable aviation fuel, and they're not willing to pay for offsets. So there's this question, there is this interest in, in traveling sustainable, sustainably, but yet there's a question of who should pay. And, and how that should be handled. And does it have to cost more? Yeah, there's, there's a ton in that question. And I think it's a really important one. Firstly, it doesn't always have to cost more. And I think that there is a real misconception that sustainability costs more for both operators and for travelers. Frequently and increasingly over time, that's not the case. Often, more sustainable operations lead to cost savings. Yeah. And from a consumer side, ditto, the cost that um, the, the savings that uh, businesses can be making could also be passed on to the consumer. Now, on the aviation side, I think this is a really pertinent discussion. It's a really, really vital one for our whole sector, even those who operate outside of, of aviation. It affects all of us. Yes, decarbonization of aviation is critical. Yes, sustainable aviation fuel in certain forms and executed in the right way is going to be a critical part of that. And yes, right now it costs more, but yeah. the costs are coming down rapidly as technology and solutions and investments scale. And what we have to do as a sector is to really support and encourage that, both by raising awareness of that decarbonization pathway and the medium term solution. That's not the, it's not the silver bullet, but the key role that SAF and, and other technologies have to play. And we have to find ways of ensuring that that becomes accessible and, and mainstream for uh, accessible for, for all um, airlines and operators and indeed consumers. I think there's a real, we have some really interesting data from, from our partners and notably Skyscanner who launched their Greener Choices tool back in 2019. And they have shown that there are vast numbers of travelers who are very willing to make 
greener choices, even when they cost more. Okay. And I think uh, Sky Scanner now published that they've had 17 million users make greener choices and use that use that tool on their website to make a, a lower to make to choose a lower emitting flight. And I think that's incredibly compelling. And we hear similar research from Booking.com that says you know that travelers are willing to put their money where their mouth is, and that they essentially want to have better choices that don't ask them to make compromises on their other needs, right. but that if they find that right solution, then there is a bit of price elasticity. But as I say, in frequent cases, it's not the it's not the case that we have to pay more to be more sustainable. But yes, okay. in certain areas of, of the emerging technology, there are um, there are prices some to yeah, there, there are yeah. some challenges. Yeah. So you know it's interesting because as I'm listening to you talk and all I mean clearly this is a process we are moving through this process. It's not going to be fast. You know, um, some elements may move faster than others. Um, just, do you believe that net zero by 2050 is sustainable? Is sustainable or I, is excuse possible? me, is achievable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, achievable. no, it's, it's no, but it's actually a fair point. Um, we <laughs> it, know that net zero by 2050, if in line with science-based targets, is possible but it requires bold, ambitious decisions to be made. So yes, it is possible whether the key stakeholders are willing to make the kind of decisions that would be required because when it comes to cutting our emissions, there is an element of reduction as well as abatement, as well as new technology, yeah. that there has to be that mix involved. And I still think it's completely feasible when we look at the numbers, both at a, a regional and a global level, we know that the, that the pathway is possible. We know that with the right investment, the right regulation, which is coming, especially at the European level, that it is possible to hit those key milestones on the decarbonization journey. But you're right, it won't be easy. It won't be without some pain. But if we can take more of the short term pain in the longer run as a whole sector, we will benefit. And can we afford to wait until 2050? Great. So that's the ultimate question, right? Because we are ultimately operating within planetary boundaries. Science-based targets tell us what the milestones are that we have to hit. And they also give us very clear scenarios of what happens if we don't. I think there are two really important things for us to think about as a sector. We depend on destinations to be thriving in order to have a thriving sector. Right. And so we have to be protecting the places that travelers go to if we want to have a successful, resilient, long-term industry and market. Yeah. I think the second piece of this is, as a sector, we have to think collectively about not just our impacts on the world and our footprint, but also how that squares up to the footprints and impacts of other sectors. I think we're gonna start finding, as we kind of do at the moment, that travel and aviation in particular become a punch bag for other sectors. They really like to point their focus and attention at us and essentially, you know, yeah. completely write off the fact that we can truly decarbonize. And I think that's going to become quite a threat to the entire industry if we can't create a very, not just compelling narrative, but compelling action plan that says we can do this, we will do this, we will collaborate to make it possible, and we will not let anybody else stand in our way. But that's going to take some um, proverbials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it reminds me of just that idea that, you know, you have to believe it before you can achieve it, right? Yes, you have yeah. to so that yes. collective belief in moving in that direction. Yeah. I guess. Belief, and I think there's something about being in it together. Yeah. The solution will never come from any one organization or company. Nobody can be the sole change on their own. It has to be a collective effort at the systems level. And not only does that make it achievable, it also makes it more believable along the way because everybody's in it together. And when, like in the Travelers Coalition, you have big competitors sitting around the t same table working right. together for the greater good, suddenly you can see more commitment happening at all levels of that organization because they can see that being reflected in their competitors and everybody knows they're in it together. Yeah, wonderful. All right, Sally Davy, thank you so much. Thanks for joining so much, Mitra. Thank you.